Hi, Roy Treveline here. Welcome to BioBytes. And we have another um, arrival today, a new specimen. And so I'm going to keep talking about growth and development because uh, this is what we're currently on. And these are the things we're going to cover very quickly. And again, I guarantee under 10 minutes, we're going to talk about these. Uh, again, if you want to write them down, you can, but we'll, we'll talk more as, as the school year goes on. Uh, anyway, Growth and Development Part 2. My name is Roy Treveline, and this is BioBytes. We're going to talk about um, more uh, growth and development, and we're going to specifically talk about this complete metamorphosis. Uh, if you remember last week, we talked about the tadpole. Uh, by the way, he is now a complete frog, ate a fly and everything. Uh, but today we're going to talk about complete metamorphosis in terms of an invertebrate. And when we do our, um, when we do our uh, scavenger hunt, again, you're going to need to be familiar with these terms if you're not. Vertebrate means you have a backbone. Invertebrate means you don't have a backbone. A uh, particular specimen I'm going to show you again uh, hatched today. So again, we, we're going to show him today. Um, and he's somewhat of a, oh, a threatened species. So uh, we're going to do our best to try to get as many of these as we can. And I'm going to release them today. Uh, anyway, when we talk about complete metamorphosis, we're talking about a complete change. Oh. And when we talk about a complete change, we're talking about going from a larva to an adult. Uh, you're familiar with the caterpillar to a butterfly. Now, uh, today, since few of you are on here, uh, not everybody's on yet, but I'm going to offer a bonus because I don't have a lot of these. Anybody that can answer this question can get one of these because I have a limited supply. Uh, first 20 Crystal Ray biology students will receive one of these um, magnifying glasses with a light. Uh, if you answer this question and send me an email at Roy Trebeline uh, at crystalraystmartin.org. Uh, and that question is, in complete metamorphosis, we know from caterpillar to butterfly, but I purposely left off two steps. I left off a step at the beginning and a step in the middle here. And I'd like to know what those two steps are. There's four stages to complete metamorphosis. And I'd like to introduce you to a woman that I just found out about, this Maria Sibia Marion, who is a from the 1600s. She was married by 13 and started having children. That's what they did. And, um, and back then, she was a woman scientist, which was very rare. She actually published a book and was one of the first persons ever to figure out that these caterpillars and these butterflies were the same species. They used to call these devil worms. She is the queen of entomology, of bugs, right? And she's the one that came up with this whole idea of complete metamorphosis, wrote a whole book, was a beautiful artist. And again, I, I, would, I, I hope to talk more about women scientists, um, but, but in 1600s, there was very few. And then we're gonna briefly talk about apoptosis and I want to talk about this P53 gene and, and cancer, and then, um, and then this idea of Evo Devo. Anyway, let me show you the specimen that we're going to talk about today. And again, I'm going to try to keep this under 10 minutes. And oh, here's the guy that just hatched. This plant here, and we got to be very careful because his wings are just starting to come out. My wife, Mrs. Treveline, is going to. Uh, Try to get them on there, and I'll put some extra light on them. But this plant is called a milkweed. It is poisonous. Maybe you've seen this before, where you crack part of it off, and that little milky latex comes out, and it's extremely poisonous. In fact, even the caterpillars find it poisonous. But if you'll notice, what you're going to find here is that the is that the um, the toxin is going to build up inside these monarchs. Any animal that eats a monarch, that orange and black, will never eat another monarch again. Um, that poison inside them builds up and they will vomit uh, profusely, and nor should you eat these plants. And I can get you one of these. We can go out looking for them with the magnifying glasses. Again, if you email me the answer to, those, to that question, the other two stages of complete metamorphosis, and I'll also send you home with some of these milkweed pods. Uh, so you can grow your own milkweed. Most people find this very uh, a noxious weed, but in our house, it grows all over the over the yard, doesn't it, Mrs. Trevor? It Trevor? does. Yes, <laughs> and we have monarchs galore. And again, they're they're a little bit um, 
uh, threatened right now. So we need as many monarchs as we can get. The unique thing about these, I don't know if this one will make it down because he hatched awful early, but the ones in the fall are going to fly all the way to Mexico. And then they'll roost there and then they'll start migrating back uh, next year again. So uh, unique in terms of um, uh, insects, uh, they do have the uh, concept of living more than one year. And you can actually buy little tags for their wings um, to uh, keep track of whether your monarch made it all the way down there. It's a way to, to study those monarch butterflies. All right, anyway, this is an invertebrate. Why? It doesn't have a backbone, right? And it's going through complete metamorphosis. This is the adult stage. And I forgot the caterpillar. All right, I'll have to show you the caterpillar later. I didn't bring him down. Oh, okay. uh, there might be another one on this plant. But we're going to release him today, and he'll be flying around making more monarchs, I hope. Uh, but remember, if you can find out the first stage and then this middle stage after the larva stage, send me an email, and again, we'll make sure you get one of those magnifying glasses. Uh, turn it. Turn off that light. Turn it off? Okay. Now, one of the things that happens when it goes from um, a caterpillar to an adult is it has to go through this process of apoptosis. Apoptosis is programmed cell death. And if you think about it, it's almost like the, the caterpillar has to recycle itself. It's going to have to kill or destroy most of its cells. And again, we talked about this last week with the tadpole. Most people don't like to think about development in terms of destroying cells. But the fact of the matter is, if you're going to go from one of those devil worms, those caterpillars, to an adult butterfly, most of the cells are going to have to be recycled. And so those cells are going to be destroyed by this process called apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. Now, I want to tie that into humans, and I want to talk briefly about the P53 gene. Now, the P53 gene is a gene that is, um, is um, found in us, and it's a tumor suppressor gene. So when we get to cancer, and we'll talk a lot about cancer, this particular gene is going to stop a lot of cancer. They call it the guardian of the genome. The 53 part is its molecular weight, but what it does is it's the guardian of the genome. If our DNA becomes mutated, mutated enough in terms of cancer, this gene will destroy those cells. They'll go through this process of apoptosis. The cells will be destroyed, and then hopefully you don't get cancer. Unfortunately, in about 50% of the cancers that exist, this gene has mutated. And if the P53 gene mutates, there's a likelihood you're going to get cancer. Um, it's that, com uh, it's that um, uh, vital in terms of um, stopping you from, from getting cancer. Um, interesting to note, this gene in elephants, we've been studying it, they have over 20 pairs of the P53 gene. Guess what? Elephants don't get a lot of cancer. So we're really, really interested in studying elephants in terms of that, right? They have so many safeguards against cancer. We do not. Um, anyway, that's called the P53 gene. And again, like we did last time, we just talked about a little bit of each of these things as we went. Now, last week we talked about with the tadpole, we said that, that, that ontogeny does not recapitulate phylogeny. And that was a fancy way of saying that you cannot see an individual develop from a tadpole, a fish-like organism, into an adult frog and say, oh, you can see evolution. It's replaying evolution. No, but what we do say is this idea of evo-devo. Again, we biologists, we like to rhyme. And this evo-devo stands for evolution and development. And what I said last week is a more accurate statement to this idea of studying development is if we look at embryos and the way they develop, we can see similarities into how we develop, even in an invertebrate, right? Now, we would have more similarities in development to an adult, uh, excuse me, to the vertebrate, the frog, but even in this um, monarch, you're going to see that gene we talked about last week, that Hox gene, which puts the arms and legs in the right parts. They have that gene as well. So this idea of evo-devo is we're studying evolution in terms of development. We're looking at similarities and differences. The more similarities we have in terms of developing the same, the more, um, 
the more likely we shared a common ancestor. Well, there we go. 10 minutes. Hey, you're going to need a two liter bottle coming up, right? With the cap. All right. So don't drink the pop, pour that out, get a two liter bottle. Thanks. Bye.